Well, hello, C++ programmers. Brian Malloy here, and I'm going to be talking about um, the fact that shallow copy versus deep copy applies not just to C++, but to every language that that you write a program in, really. The, the notion applies. It may not seem that, but it, but it is. So what I have here is the old string class that we wrote. And to we made it deep copies of everything. So here I'm using the copy constructor. We wrote a copy constructor right here. So we'd make a deep copy. And here I'm using assignment. And I overloaded assignment to make a deep copy so everything worked. So let me just get rid of this and show you that this same problem can occur in Java or Python. Because a lot of students sometimes think, well, oh, I use Java. I don't need, I don't, what's this? new and delete. I don't have to worry about that. And I don't have to worry about shallow copy versus deep copy. But in fact, it applies to all languages. So let me just bring Python up here. And let me create a list of, of, uh, of 10 numbers. OK? So if I print L, you'll see I've got the numbers from 0 to 9. And now let me say make a copy of that. OK? I'm sorry. So there, I've made a copy. So T and L are the same. However, what I've done actually is made a shallow copy. Let me demonstrate to you that I have. Let me append a number to the end of t. We'll append 99. So if I list t, t is 99. However, I have made a deep copy. So when I list l, l also has 99. And that behavior might be something that I don't actually want. So for example, if I have the original list l, and I want to make a temporary copy called t that I can mess around with but without screwing l up, I've, I've just lost the game because um, I've, whatever I do to L, I'm doing to T because they both point to the same object, actually, the same list object. But the neat thing about that is that all languages, or most languages at least, provide a facility to avoid this. So let me just do this, this same thing again. And now I can say T equals a deep copy of L. So watch, I'll list T. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I only put one thing in there. I'm so sorry. Uh, there's T and there's L, and they each have a 0. I put a 1 here. I meant to put a 10 here. That's OK. It's the same idea. Now, if I add something to the end of T, let's put 99 at the end of T. If I list T, it has two things in it. If I list L, it only has one because I made a deep copy. OK? so. Really, these same principles apply to all languages. So when you learn these concepts in C++, they're going to improve your programming no matter what language you're using. And of course, it's harder than that. Let me just show you. Let's suppose I have a list L that is a list of lists. Let's put Bill in here. Bill's a student. He's got a 99 and an 88. How's that? OK, and then let's put another one in there. Let's put Mary. Uh, there's something about Mary. Let's put give her a 98 and an 89. OK, sorry. So there we have what I do wrong. Oh, I did something wrong. Let me fix this. I want a list of lists. There, now I've got a list of lists. There's L. It's a list of lists, right? And now let me try to make a deep copy of L, the same way I did before. So I'd say T equals list L. Right? So I print T, I print L, and I think I've got a deep copy. Guess what? I don't. So watch. Let me convince you. So suppose I say T of 0, am I doing this right? T of 0, 0 equals. Let's assume Bill tries to change his name to Bob. OK? Now if I list T, the name got changed. Guess what? So did L's name. So T, the first name, Bill got changed to Bob. And in L, it got changed to Bob. So it's tricky, isn't it? It's a pro pro difficult problem. Let me go back and do this again. And oh, I should have made a copy of that. And let me go ahead and do that list L again. So I want L equal to, um, oh, I think I had Bill. I should have copied it. I'm sorry, 99, 88. There's one of them. Sorry, there's one of them. And now let's do Mary. And we'll put uh, a 98 and an 89. OK, so there's L. And I want a deep copy. So I've got to import this module called copy. And now I'll say t equals copy.deepcopy of L. 
now I've actually got a deep copy. So look at L and look at T, and I'm gonna say T of zero, zero, E, I'm sorry, equals Bob, I'm sorry, Bob. Now watch, look at T. T, the first guy, Bill got changed to Bob, but watch L. L did not, it got preserved. So that's how you make a deeper copy. <laughs> so the first time we made a deep copy, now we've made a deeper copy, and I don't know of any deepest. <laughs> and this same issue applies to the problem we had before. So let's take a look. If I get rid of this, watch. If I get rid of that, and so let me get rid of this, and I'm gonna use the default copy constructor. So let's just make this simple for ourselves, watch. So I make, B, let, let's let, um, let's even make this simpler. Let's do this. Okay, and let's make this be A. So A equals C. Okay, now let's make it be B. Okay, now watch. I'm going to try to change, I gotta change something. Let me see, how do I make this a change? So I'm gonna need a set. So I actually have to write a set. See, there I, there I go, draw, painting myself into a corner. But let's do a set, so we'll have a set buff. Uh, B and we'll make a buff. Okay, so what do I have to do in here? There's a bunch of stuff. I'm going to keep this short. So I need to delete the current buffer. I should check for null, but I'm not going to. And then I'm going to say buff equals new care str len of B plus one str cpy into buff from B. And there I've got it. Okay, I hope that works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to say a dot set buff cat to dog. Okay. Oops, sorry. And let's see if this compiles even. Let me see if it compiles. It does compile. And guess what? We got a problem. Okay. A couple of problems. Let's get rid of the destructor. We'll get rid of that double free. Okay, because Python actually, oh, you can't see this. I didn't make this. Okay, so watch. I'll run it, and look what happened. Same thing. Same thing, that shallow copy. So A didn't have anything, and B had cat. And I changed A to dog, and I said A equal to B. So if I'd actually print them, if I'd come up here and print them here, I would get, um, what would I get? I'll get A equals B, I'll get cat cat, right? So let me compile, I get cat cat. Then when I change A to dog, I automatically change B to dog because I've got a shallow copy. And that's the same issue if you think about it. Can you see that? That's the same issue that I was talking about in Python. So <clears throat> this notion of shallow copy versus deep copy is actually important to all programming languages. And a lot of the, most of the concepts that we're gonna talk about with regard to C++ and writing correct C++ programs will not just apply to C++, but the concepts themselves, not the syntax, but the concepts themselves will apply to all programming languages. So happy programming. Brian Malloy over and out.